I think many people will say, well, this is a tragic case. She wants to come back to, to Britain and, and see her family, and it's a tragedy for them. Of course, it's a far greater tragedy for the people who suffered at the hands of the brutal sadists who called themselves the Islamic State people. She deliberately and voluntarily uh, went out to support. And the uh, my, my anxiety really is that she will either try to come back or that they will now appeal against this further appeal. And it will go on and on and on because there's no doubt in, in my mind that she is a very dangerous woman. And there's I say that because there is no sign at all that she feels uh, remorse, that she has any understanding, really, of the awful things that the so-called Islamic State did. And the argument that um, she was the victim of trafficking, that, that's an argument that sort of popped up over uh, out of nowhere in 2021. Uh, she first said she now thinks that she'd, she's been trafficked. At mm -hmm. the time, it was her own decision, and that's the end of it. Does it mean anything to you that she was 15? Like 15 year old girls think they know everything and they know nothing. I have a few teenagers in my house. They know right from wrong. They wouldn't have got on a plane to go and join a terrorist cult. However, the argument that, that her side have made is that she was a vulnerable young girl. Well, you know, that is said, and the judges said, arguably there was a case that she wasn't properly safeguarded. I must say, when I was 15, I was actually <laughs> quite in control of my own life, and I decided what, what I, I wanted to do, and I could remember what it felt like to be 15. Shamima seems to me to be somebody who was actually a rather strong person and resolved to go out. People will recall she said she hated the British life that she felt forced to live. She hated it. She felt uh, constricted by British life and British values, which is why she chose to go to the most uh, conservative uh, Islamic state in the world. She, she chose that. So I think it was deliberate. And when she chose to do so, it was deliberate. Now, there is an argument. You can say she was a kid. That's what the law says. She is a kid. It, it, it's very complicated. And uh, you know, what's a child and what isn't a child. And it could well be that, yeah, somebody should have said to her, possibly her family, who've been quick to blame absolutely everybody but themselves, uh, yeah, she, <laughs> she should have been prevented from going. But the truth is, she was very determined. She did it all. She herself said, she, it wasn't a, an idea she had just like that. She said it was the result of long deliberation. So to restrain somebody like that, I think, is difficult. And what are you going to do? Lock her up? Mm, mm. Well, if she came back here, of course, that would be one of the potential outcomes. Very difficult to build a case, though, presumably, on crimes which happened in a lawless state many years ago. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that's why it... The call to bring her back is actually a call for her to escape justice. I know people say, oh, you know, she's British. Let, let her have the benefit of uh, the British courts. As I say, she she's rejected British values. She threw her British passport away in 2015. And uh, I think her supporters realise that if she were to come to, to Britain, there couldn't be a trial. After all, most of the victims of what she and her chums did in Syria and Iraq are now dead. So, uh, you know, you, you, you couldn't have a trial. You mustn't make somebody stateless in English law. Uh, she's not been made stateless. There are 150 other people who also, in the similar circumstances, been rightly stripped of their British citizenship. Yeah. Uh, it's a privilege to be, you know, a Brit. And I'm sure we all of us wake up every morning saying, thank God we're not in Ukraine or in Syria or Iraq. So somebody wants to do a serious damage mm. deliberately that they should then come back. And even if she were sent to prison, as I say, it's most unlikely, but even if she were sent to prison, she would be a kind of jihadist icon like Russian or a Chowdhury who tried to assassinate Stephen Tim's MP. We're told she is a, you know, an icon of jihadist prisoners in our jails, of whom there are far too many. So no, absolutely the right decision. I fear, though, it will be appealed and it will go on and on and on on uh, uh, for well, some time.